and today I'm going to be using resin for the very first time. So my sister's birthday is coming up and I thought why not make her something. I've got these moulds from Amazon, got a couple of these and I've also got a necklace eyelet which I'm going to fill in with resin and I've also got some letters so I could do a keychain or something dangling. <laughs> So the resin we're going to be using today is craft resin. I found this on Amazon. It's the cheapest, but it had some really good reviews. And it's meant to be heat resistant as well, so I could at a later date make some posters. I've also bought some dried flowers from Amazon. It's real flowers. I'm going to put those in clear, I think. I haven't quite decided yet. I've also bought some mica powder. I'm going to mix it in with the resin to make all the different types of colours. Now in here, I've got around 32 different colours. So the colours that I'm going to be using today for my sister's piece, I'm going to match her hallway because she's just been decorating too. So the logic behind today's video is for me to show you the very first time that I'm using resin and hopefully point out a couple of the rookie mistakes that I've made so that you don't make them when you first try it. I think it's easy to watch professionals and experts and people that have been using resin for years on YouTube, but they're not necessarily going to be able to show you what mistakes they made when they first started. Which brings me nicely on to lesson number one, which is to measure your moulds. I didn't do this, I winged it, and I ended up making far too much resin because I overestimated how much I actually needed. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You could do it with a ruler if you think it's easy enough to measure the inside space of the moulds. Or the way that I've figured out how to do recently is to use a pipette with a measure on the side of it and to drop water into it measuring how many uh, millilitres of water it takes to fill that cylinder until you've got a nice meniscus over the top. Mistake number two or lesson number two is less is more when it comes to glitter, when it comes to colouring. You really don't need as much as you think you do, honestly. Put it back. Not that much. Stop. Oh god. Lesson three is to stir slowly. Do not mix your resin too fast because you will incorporate too many bubbles and you won't get a clear finish. Spoiler alert, but some of the first pieces I made look like I've made them in a jacuzzi. Lesson four is that flowers float. Who would have known? Unfortunately, this means that all flowers will float to the top of anything that you're pouring, so it's probably best to do two layers. If you are going to be using real flowers, it's important to make sure that each part of the flower is covered so that there's no exposure to air, because otherwise they will rot. Lesson five is something I didn't even think about at first, and it is to use a level surface. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner right now, the necklace piece is starting to leak out of the mould. And it's not cute. Lesson six is to know when to stop. I probably could have stopped a long time ago on this bit and then just topped it up with clear and it would have looked a lot better at the end. But I kept going and going and ended up mixing all the colours together and you don't see any of the different colours in the end. Still messing with it now. Lesson seven is to keep gloves on at all times. 
I took them off here because the dried flowers were sticking to the gloves. If you need to, use tweezers or clean the gloves down with baby wipes or face wipes, anything. But just keep the gloves on because it can be harmful to you. Lesson eight is don't be afraid to slightly overfill your moulds. Once my resin had cured, I noticed that there was a slight dip in the surface where it had shrunken back into the moulds. So don't be afraid to slightly overfill to compensate for this. Lesson nine is to make sure that you pay attention to temperature. I don't mean the temperature of the resin, although that does help but pay attention to the weather and how warm your room is. Make sure that it's at the right temperature so that your resin will cure properly. Otherwise it may take longer or it may not cure at all. I didn't pay attention to this. I left the room quite cold and some of the pieces took a lot longer to cure than they should have. Lesson 10 is to leave time between layers of colours. If I had done a smaller quantity of resin this time, then I could have waited until maybe another five hours time and done separate layers of different colours and then got that definition of each of the colours rather than sort of merging into one big gloopy colour. Like with the J, I could have done a layer of orange, let it set for five hours, and then a, a layer of black and could have properly done the basketball J that I really wanted to do for this person because they love basketball. Also, if I'd have gone for a smaller quantity of resin to start off with in the mould, I could have done the B and the G and had the flowers set in the centre of the mould rather than towards the outer edges. Hey guys, so it's 24 hours after we made the resin. Uh, I'm going to take you through a couple of these that have worked, a couple of these that haven't worked. Alright, so I'm going to take you through some of these letters. This is the B, worked out really nice and they're clear. But then you've got a little bit of separation. Maybe I shouldn't have put too much resin on the bottom of the moulds. It's really quite pretty. Anything I would say is these are a bit thick they're a bit thick for key rings maybe half of that would have been good and then the p so this was made with the leftover colors which were um, nebula colors and this is the, the g this had the glitter in it as well which worked quite nicely but you can't see as much of the petals again we've got the separation of the petals quite high up and i think it needs a little on the top it needs another coat of clear resin just to finish that off so it doesn't make the flowers mouldy. The J, basketball theme J, <laughs> didn't quite work. It's okay, but I think what I would have done next time is maybe do it in layers and then wait between the layers, do like a really thin black layer so you've got the stripes going down, which would be really good. Plus, I realised the person I've given this to is actually colour blind. <laughs> so maybe they won't be able to tell the difference. I just think, ah, oh, it's a nice gift. The N. I'm pretty proud of this one, actually. You can see the nebula colours in there. There's bits of pink in the top and the blue you can see, the black's coming through. I'm thinking that's going to match the person's tattoo that they've got in sim similar sort of colours. And then we've got the S made up of the leftover rose gold, which turned out really nicely, actually. How shiny and pleasant that is. Obviously, I made too much resin in the first place. 
which is why I had to do so many marks. I only planned on doing a couple of letters and a couple of bookmarks and I ended up doing three bookmarks, two pieces, plus six letters and two uh, necklaces. But the bookmarks, they're still, I think the rooms have been a bit cold so they haven't quite cured yet, but the sort of leftover nebula, I'm gonna say nebula a lot in the video, I'm sorry. That's really quite cool. And I wouldn't be, once I'd, I could trim the edges here with a pair of scissors or something and go over it with some wet and dry paper, make it look quite nice. One that really surprised me actually, with the left, the last minute addition with all the leftover resins that was left was this bookmark. It's still quite soft, so it's still got some curing to go. But it looked pretty cool compared to, well considering it's made up of everything that was left over. Oh, oh, the next one. She's beautiful. Look how gorgeous that is. With just the clear and some flowers running through it. But that is gorgeous. I think the clear is actually my favourite. Even though I've got all these colours to play with, the clear resin is probably going to be my favourite. A couple of bits that didn't work out how I thought they would do. So this was the, remember me pouring this in? This was the rose gold, black and white. It's sparkly bits. It just looks a little bit not tacky, but not how I pictured it. I was thinking streaks of black and bits of white. and. And this one that hasn't set yet, this is still quite flexible. I'm gonna have to do another thing for my sister because I don't think she's gonna quite like that. I mean, it turned out nice, but it's just not, it's not my sister's style. It's quite glittery on the bottom as well. The necklaces, so a couple of these are still curing, but quite pretty. The one that did work well was the one with less glitter, and less flowers, which looks quite pretty. I'll try another couple without glitter. It's funny because last night, once I'd got everything into the moulds, the gold leaf turned up, didn't it? Now I'm gonna have to do some of that as well today. <laughs> oh no. I did actually have an idea. So if you, like me, have made a mistake of buying anything on Wish. <laughs> I'm not a girly girl, but they are ridiculous. <laughs> so I was thinking. When girls take their eyelashes off at night, maybe a bit drunk, maybe want somewhere clean or somewhere nice to put them. What if I put some resin over some false eyelashes and give them a place to put their lashes? So they know it's going to be clean, they know, it's, they, they know where to find them. That's a good idea too, thanks. Nice. I'm going to mix up some resin and try out the whole thing. So this is a result of me using the gold leaf. I ended up doing a necklace for my sister, a gold and clear bookmark for my mum. That bookmark there is all the leftover chips of the resin over the last couple of projects that you've just seen me do, but I put it in a clear resin. I ended up coating the B and the G and the flower bookmark in another gloss of clear resin just to make sure the flowers were all covered. And then this I ended up giving to my sister for her birthday as well. Eyelashes for a quick look. How cool does that look? Little bedside knickknack. I like it. You can put your eyelashes on there when you go to bed. It's a little bit extra with the uh, extra long lashes. So, thank you for watching me play with resin for the first time. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments so I can make some more. Thank you. This is quite satisfying. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Oh, I'm still doing it. I mean, she's thick with three C's. Well, it'd be a nice little gift. People like free stuff, so. I made too much uh, latex in the first. Latex? Hmm. I'm not too disgusted, is it? What's that, sassy? Hmm. It's a little bit. Look how nice that is. Me a lot of editing and this one. Me pissing about my hair.